Hey, this is Dino, and uh, I'll show you uh, how the paths, the resource paths, work within API products. So here's an API proxy that I put together uh, for the purpose of illustration. Uh, this one has two conditional flows, one that accepts a post on slash prices slash cost, one that accepts a get on slash prices. I don't actually look at the payload for the post. Um, uh, just really basic stuff. All right, so that's the API proxy. Uh, now what we can do is create uh, an API product and we'll call this Dino you know, prod one. Um, and what I can do, I don't need to worry about any of that stuff. Uh, what I wanna do is add an API proxy. So it'll be the product path demo. That's the thing I was just showing to you. And uh, we'll specify the custom resource path. So for this one, uh, we'll put in uh, prices. So that'll accept a, uh, a path on prices. You can see it's just the path, not the path and the verb that I can restrict here. So this is the API product. It accepts this API proxy, but only requests on that resource path. All right. Now uh, what we'll, we can do is add uh, a second uh, API product. We'll call it Dino prod two. Um, and again, add the API proxy. And in this case, I can either specify a restricted set of paths or just leave that blank. And what I'll get is uh, the wildcard path. So all paths within that API proxy uh, will be permitted for this API product. Okay, so that does it for the API products, but uh, what we need is keys or apps for those products. So let's create a couple. Uh, first one will be uh, for the, uh, we'll call it Dino App 1. Doesn't matter the developer name. We will add in Dino Prod 1. And this is the one that has the path restriction. All right, so let's save it. Okay, now we will add a second one. We'll call it Dino App 2. Uh, and again, it doesn't matter. The developer name doesn't matter. This time we will select Dino Prod 2. This is the one with no path restriction. Save it. Okay, now what I'm going to do is hop into Dino App 1. I want to get the consumer key, and I'll copy that. Now, uh, let's flip over to the terminal. And uh, what I want to do is invoke it. And this is what it looks like. Uh, this is the host name and product path demo prices is one of them. And I think you said ID equals one, two, three, four, five. Doesn't matter. So when we invoke that, um, the what I've done is I've configured the API proxy to look for the uh, API key in a header. And if I don't pass the header, then it's going to give me an error. So let's pass in the header dash H API key, and we'll paste in that uh, API key that I received from Dino Prod One uh, or Dino App One. And what I've done is I have a an, um, an assigned message on the response that says uh, that specifies or tells me the app and the product I used for this API key. All right, so you can see it worked. When I send in the API key and I invoke slash prices, it uh, looks good. Let's try the uh, the failure case. So if I put in costs here, what's going to happen? What it's going to say is invalid client. And uh, that's because this API key works for product one, which is restricted by path. All right. Okay, so let's click into the other app. Dino App 2, which is configured on Dino Prod 2. It's a different consumer key. We'll flip back over to the terminal. Um, we'll replace the original API key with this new one. But uh, remember, uh, if I invoke this, uh, this is a GET request. And we've configured the API proxy to only accept posts on that endpoint. So um, in that case, I'm going to get, if I don't send a post, I'm going to get the uh, uh, the 404 message, which is expected. So if we put in a post and uh, send a payload, uh, you'll see that 
that API product succeeds and it's telling me that's the app name and that's the product name. And uh, by the way, I can also flip back and because there's unrestricted path for this API key, I can invoke that and that also succeeds. All right, that's it.